Hey everyone, my name is Max at 343 Labs and today I'd like to show you a clip by one of our instructors, Lewis Beck, where he talks about how to get your kick, your bass and your sub all to sit well within the mix so that you have a balanced mix. This clip is taken from 343 TV, which airs every day right here on our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the clip, don't forget to subscribe below and let's get into it. So I have this bass line right here, which is fairly short and plucky. I mean, it's not completely dead in terms of like amount of time it's flowing, but you know, it, it, it does feel like it's floating a little bit, right? There's a nice little bit of kind of release between, sorry, a little bit of release between each of the notes. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Max. All right. So, so the thing that you always want to be thinking about, right? When you are making your track is first off, do you want a tight bass line or a long bass line, right? And that's also going to seriously impact the way that you want to make your make your your kick drum. And so I was guilty of this for a really long time. So I was like for a long period of time really into really into um like that deep house movement that just like only uses sustained bass lines. You know, just like boom, 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 boom. And so I kind of it took me a long time to realize that if you lose a super, use a super long <laughs> on a tight, long bass, <laughs> we can, we can make it happen, dude. So what I'm literally just going to do is I'm just going to change the envelope of the sound and make this last longer. We're going to see how this starts to affect the way that the kick can be perceived. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the release. Now it's really muddying up the low end. So I'm going to also turn up the decay on the filter. Big difference between those two. So just on a really basic level, let's talk about what's going on in the low end with this bass. So there's literally more time spent in the low frequencies, right? Which means, in turn, that there's actually less room for a kick. So let me show you the biggest disaster that you could try to do is to take the long kick and combine it with the long bass. So you can hear how your kick, that low, that low decay sound just disappears when you put the longer bass on it. Now, if you listen along to this longer bass, we have so much as right? And it's the same tone as the So this is immediately causing a problem. Now, you could try to solve this, right, by side chaining. You could. So let's throw on a side chain and, and, and see how that functions. So I'm going to side chain from the long kick I suppose yep okay so any t this is a good question so not Grahman's asking any tips for increasing perceived loudness of a sub bass I had the needle pinned at zero decibels but can barely hear it Okay, well, 
couple a couple of reasons why that is. So the problem is is that you can't hear sub. Period. You can't hear it. You can only feel it. I don't mean that as in like you can't hear it, man. You can only feel it. I mean that like literally you can't hear it. The reason it's called sub is because it's subharmonic frequencies. Right? And so subharmonic means below where you can hear. So the secret to raising the kind of perceived loudness of of a low end, right? Is basically add more high frequencies. So there's this here, let me let me pull up this plugin from Isotope, which is the tonal balance control. So this is a measurement of proportionally speaking how loud low frequencies are compared to high frequencies. Now, this is in terms of measurement, not in terms of perception, right? Now, there's this whole, you know, crazy thing going on at the moment. Okay, so let's 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 take a step back here. Yes, Reyes Pavlov, you can hear 35 hertz. Everyone can. You cannot hear 29 hertz. That's just a fact. It dips out of the way. What you are hearing, however, is overtones. There will be harmonic overtones. The main thing you're going to be hearing in your speakers, if you think you're actually hearing it, is the fact that it's causing the dri the, the uh, drivers to vibrate so much that it's creating distortion in the actual output of the speaker. Now, that, that notwithstanding, right, the thing that actually makes your sub feel more present and feel more powerful is if you highlight the overtones, right? So what, I was, what I'm explaining here, essentially, and this is a really important fact, and this is kind of what this whole entire exercise is about, is... The more low frequencies you have in volume, the more high frequencies you're going to need to make it seem louder. I'm going to say that again. The more low frequencies you have in literal volume, in measured volume, the more high frequencies you will need to make it seem louder. Okay? So what I mean by that, and this is what's kind of super weird, about the way that sound works and the way that we interact with it, right? High frequencies will sound louder. What I mean by that is I can turn up the bass a lot more without it making your ears, you know, without you making one to cover your ears than turning up high frequencies. It's just the way our ears work, right? And so, the th but the thing is, is that in terms of measurement, in terms of getting your track to be like, you know, um, negative six you know negative three rms or whatever it is which is very different than negative three luffs right well then the thing is is that low frequency content will drive up the actual measurement of the volume so like the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to mastering and mixing their own music right is that they'll make a track that's super low end heavy where the highs are just not clear enough right and then they'll master it and they'll compress it and they'll limit it and this and that and they're their um you know their meter will say oh yeah you know this is super loud and it'll even tell them that their luffs are louder than another track and then they go and listen to a professional track and they go what the fuck why does mine sound quieter well this is kind of the balance right the trade-off is, is the more low end that you use the less loud it's going to seem but the more loud it's going to be right uh, and so it's all about getting like a good balance, right? And so the, the more, the fatter your low end is, the more you can get away with making high frequencies louder, right? And so I've spent, uh, I found a great mastering engineer recently that's been mastering a bunch of my, my music because I prefer to not master my own stuff. And we were kind of discussing this point, which is that like, you know, the biggest thing that people are trying to figure out right now is like, how do you make your music seem loud on Spotify, right? There's this whole, you can find this everywhere on the internet. Yes, exactly. That's precisely correct, not Raman. So just to draw everyone's attention to the kind of picking up in the chat. So that's why saturation and distortion harmonics bring it out, although sometimes unpredictably. 
So yeah, basically saturation and distortion make the sub seem louder because what you're doing is you're adding more high frequencies or just higher frequencies, right? Usually you're just adding it at like 300 or something, uh, 300 or 600. And that's actually just drawing your attention to it more. It's actually physically balancing it out more, right? So a great way to think about balance. Um, no, don't necessarily want to compress it, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, so a big way to think about balance, right, is that your speakers are designed for humans, right? I, that sound, might seem, seem like a funny, silly, ridiculous thing to say, but um, what I mean by that is you're the person interacting with it. It's designed for you, right? And so you want to hear it being louder, but feel it being powerful, right? So one of the greatest tricks to make your low end, for instance, less flabby is just add more high end. It's kind of weird. So if you take a kick that sounds like it's not well defined, right? And you feel like, oh, I need to put on a transient shaper or this or that. Transient shapers could be a great thing to do. But what a transient shaper is anyway, is it's just expanding the content in the higher areas usually, right? If you're doing that. Alternatively, right? One way to make something feel tighter is to actually reduce the sustain on the low end and you kind of get the same result right but you always should think about eq as literally a balance beam so again coming back to it with your speakers right you'll actually make it sound more balanced and less kind of like flumpy just by adding that high frequency content um now i do want to talk about what b just said he said just compress it so the thing is is that you don't really want to compress your low end unless you're doing it you don't really want to compress your low end unless you're doing it because your low end isn't powerful enough so let's be very clear about what compression does right it brings it it makes the distance between the loudest thing and the quietest thing smaller so it reduces the perception of dynamics, right? Literally what a compressor does is it just basically says anything that crosses this point will be reduced in volume, right? But as a result of that, it gets pushed down closer to the low volume thing. So the reason I would caution against compressing your sub just for the sake of it, right, is because what will happen is it'll actually make it more of just a block. Now, if you're making dubstep, maybe that's what you want. But if you're making something that you want to f like actually kind of like dip and dive and have a little bit more nuance, you know, and get that nice sub that kind of like dies off, you know, very warmly. Well, you don't really want to compress it because then what's going to happen is, is that it's just this block of. <laughs> and again, if you want that, then definitely do that. But um, you're better off actually just shelving off. The low end, so. This is kind of something a lot of people, I think, don't realize, but you'll go a lot further towards making your bass cleaner. For instance, let's take this one. If you just use a shelf as opposed to a cut. Now, sometimes you do need a cut, right? Sometimes, like, for instance, on this one, there's, like, straight up garbage down there. So, like, you would cut out stuff below, like, maybe 30. But then I would actually use a shelf to get a much better balance. And you still have a nice, fat, low end. And to, to be honest, I might even just go down to kind of 20 just to make sure all the gook is out. Anyway, so let's go back into the comments real quick. So Northern Codes, how to make more sub bass layers. I see a lot of tracks in techno where I can see in the spectrum a lot of movement. Yeah, okay. Um, this is, all right, I'll, I'll show you a trick that I that I used to use when I was making more techno. Um, but so real quick, I just want to come all the loop all the way back around. Uh, if you're using a really long bass like this, And you're using a long kick, right? And you're com 
and you're side chaining, um, then why did you use the the longer bass? And that's something to think about. It's like why would you, you're literally taking away the sustain by using side chain. So instead of side chaining like that, just use the shorter kick with the longer bass. And now you can actually hear, it's kind of like there's natural side chain on it. Now yeah, you could side chain it like a little bit if you want, you know? But now you don't need to do it in such a way that it's like, you can literally just do it for the peak. So this is the front of the kick just makes it through. You got it, Andrew, but I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, 343 TV goes live every day right here on our YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about music production, come take a class with us or just join our community. You can find more information at 343labs.com or 343labs.de for our German website. See you next time.